What is going on guys, it is WrestleMania here, back with another video. Now I'm just going to get straight to the point here. Night 2 of WrestleMania was 10 times better than Night 1 of WrestleMania as Cody Rhodes dethroned Roman Reigns finally after 1316 day reign. But now that I've got that out, Night 1 left Cody Rhodes facing seemingly insurmountable odds against Roman Reigns. But as I've just spoiled now, he did finish the story. But join us now as we recap Night 2 of 2024's Showcase of the Immortals and provide our exclusive analysis as we look at the good, the bad, and the downright ugly. Be sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also check out our new videos on WrestleMania XL. And WrestleMania Night 2 opens up with the World Heavyweight Championship match as champion Seth freaking Rollins takes on Drew McIntyre. Now this was a wild brawl between two of the WWE's biggest competitors. And while CM Punk was on commentary, he didn't manage to actually distract either Drew McIntyre or Seth Rollins throughout the match. Even though Drew McIntyre took time to even tweet out during the match saying bored at work. But McIntyre actually managed to prevail and become new World Heavyweight Champion. After the match, Drew McIntyre confronts CM Punk standing on the announce table and holding the title in Punk's face. McIntyre makes an obscene gesture and Punk snaps, attacking McIntyre and actually laying him out. Whilst you think it was all good and done there, out comes Damian Priest to cash in his Money in the Bank briefcase. And we now have a World Heavyweight Championship match between McIntyre and Damian Priest. Now it doesn't even take too long for Damian Priest to lay out McIntyre and he manages to do it in 5 seconds as he is now the new World Heavyweight Champion. CM Punk gloats as Drew sits in the ring while Damian Priest celebrates with his teammates from the Judgment Day on the stage. But then Snoop Dogg appears with his WWE Golden Championship and then joins the announce team to promote his latest product, Gin and Juice. Next up is a Philadelphia street fight as special guest referee Bubba Ray Dudley, yeah that was a bit random, Bobby Lashley and the street profits of Angelo Dawkins and Montez Ford with BFAB take on the final testament of Karrion Cross, Akam and Razar with Scarlet and Precious Paul Ellering. Now the final testament gets the early advantage, but Lashley and the Prophets have many reasons for revenge after weeks of ambushes by the final testament. After disposing of AOP, Lashley, Montez and Ford take out Karrion Cross, take a page out of the Dudley Boys playbook and hit a WhatsApp, followed by putting Cross through the table with a frog splash for the win. And we say putting through the table, but the table just actually broke on its own. The winners of the match, Bobby Lashley and the Street Profits. Next up, LA Knight takes on AJ Styles. Now Styles goes after Knight's leg, no doubt looking to set up the calf crusher. However, Knight's speed and resilience confound Styles, and all it takes is one BFT for LA Knight to show the phenomenal one whose game it is. LA Knight wins the match. But before the match, Sami Zayn shows Kevin Owens his newly won Intercontinental Championship and tells KO it's his turn for a title. Next up is a triple threat match for the United States Championship as champion Logan Paul takes on Randy Orton and Kevin Owens. Now, Owens rides down to the ring in a golf cart, but Kevin Owens banks up and lets the Viper on it. He then speeds down the ring like he was cashing in the Money in the Bank briefcase, but the two team up to take out Paul, but when Orton tries to surprise KO with an RKO, it's on between the prize fighter and the Apex Predator. Paul swoops in though to pick up the pieces. It's anyone's game as all three superstars look to have things won, but ultimately Paul capitalizes on the triple threat dynamics, throwing Orton into the ringside post after Orton RKO's Owens and hits the frog splash for the 1-2-3. Logan Paul manages to retain the US Championship, even with a little help from Aisho Speed. Next up is the WWE Women's Championship match as champion Io Sky takes on Bayley. Io targets Bayley's leg knowing the role model was out for over a year with a knee injury and that is a prime target. Bayley wrestles on a bad wheel while Sky tries to play mind games with Bayley, briefly hinting at reconciliation before going back after her. Ultimately, Bayley wins after landing a flying elbow smash and a rose plant to Sky. Bayley becomes the new WWE Women's Champion. And finally, it's now time for the main event. The Bloodline Rules match for the Undisputed Championship as champion Roman Reigns takes on Cody Rhodes. Now it's Bloodline Rules as Cody Rhodes stands alone against Roman Reigns in the Bloodline's Jimmy Uso, Solo Sokoa and the final boss. At least it seems that way until the American Nightmare gets help from Jey Uso followed by John Cena and The Undertaker. Seth Rollins even appears wearing his S.H.I.E.L.D. outfit and coming out to his S.H.I.E.L.D. music. With the interference eliminated, Cody goes to finish his story and three crossroads later, Cody is your new WWE Undisputed Champion. After the match, several baby faces join Cody in the ring to celebrate as well as Cody's mom, his wife Brandy and members of the Rhodes family as WrestleMania 40 Night 2 comes to an end. 
Well, that was a quick recap of the show. What about the good, the bad, and the downright ugly? As always, we start off with the good as number one, the end is just the beginning. And tonight's Drew McIntyre vs Seth Rollins opener for the World Heavyweight Championship told many stories, including a beat up Seth Rollins doing everything he could to keep his title, Drew's quest to win a world title in front of a live audience, and the bizarre hate fest between Drew McIntyre, Seth Rollins, and CM Punk, who was obviously at ringside calling the action. The match was a non-stop brawl as McIntyre hit the Claymore in the bout's opening moments, nearly stealing a win. McIntyre's eventual victory and victory lap in front of CM Punk backfired, allowing Damian Priest to make one of the best Money in the Bank cash-ins ever. In fact, Drew McIntyre's championship reign lasted only 5 minutes and it only took 5 seconds for Damian Priest to win the title. Number 2. Snoop Dogg Delivers WrestleMania's policy of bringing in celebs has always been hit and miss, such as Lil Wayne's awful appearance on night one, but Snoop Dogg's presence on commentary during the Philly street fight was pure comedy gold. As far as we're concerned, Snoop needs to be on commentary on every match at Mania. Number 3. Something for Everyone As Vince McMahon often said when describing the WWE's appeal, every show features something for everyone including action adventure, suspense, comedy, and romance. Such was the case with tonight's Philadelphia Street Fight, which featured Philadelphia favorite Bubba Ray Dudley serving as a guest referee, as well as directing Lashley and the Street Profits in carrying out some of the Dudley boys' favorite moves on Karrion Cross. That with an action-packed brawl that was a good finish to an otherwise forgettable feud, but not every match has to be a 5-star classic or run 45 minutes, and the Philly Street Fight was a 9 minutes of fun and brawling. A good segue between Damian Priest's world title win and the LA Knight vs AJ Styles match. Number 4. The Maverick Steals Another One The WWE has found the right approach to booking Logan Paul with tonight's triple threat match and finish, exemplifying everything that works about Paul. He's easy to boo due to his arrogance and skill at breaking the rules. Add Paul's incredible skills as a Kama Houdini and you have Paul always finding a way to avoid the comeuppance he deserves, which only infuriates fans further. While it's questionable whether the WWE should have another part-timer holding the title, the company apparently feels the mainstream attention Paul brings in is worth it. Triple threat matches are often clunky as one wrestler has to be taken out while the two others fight. However, tonight's match was well played and having streamer iShow Speed trying to help Logan only to eat an RKO on the announce table was a WrestleMania moment. We get that WWE loves to bring these streamers in, but when's it going to end? Are we going to have Mr. Beast come up as The Undertaker's Druid next year? Number 5. EO and Bailey Blockbuster Or whether you embrace the storyline of EO Sky betraying Bailey or relish the thought of EO and Bailey battling each other, tonight's WWE Women's Championship match was a blockbuster. The match was also free from interference from damage control, which made it all the more enjoyable. Interference can add to a match, but sometimes it's good to just let two superstars show off their stuff, even if one is a heel. Some fans might be disappointed that EO Sky's title reign is over, but there are plenty more championships in her future and it's going to be interesting to see how Bayley's latest title run works out. If it's anything like a last one, she could be champion for a long time. Number 6. A Night of WrestleMania Moments but Speaking of WrestleMania moments, the WWE outdid itself with Night 2, delivering several Mania moments including Damian Priest's successful cash-in, Snoop Dogg's guest appearance, Randy Orton RKOing I Show Speed on the announce table, and of course, the main event which featured several WrestleMania moments. Number 7. A Hot Crowd oh, What a difference a day makes! The fans at Lincoln Financial Field came alive tonight, following Night 1's very noticeably quiet crowd. Granted, the fans were probably more concerned with avoiding hypothermia on Night 1 than how loud they could cheer. Night 2's warm weather likely helped, but for whatever reason, the fans' excitement made the show even better, another example of the benefits of stadium shows. It's also made for some classy moments such as when the fans gave a standing ovation after Bayley vs Io Sky's match. And a gracious champion, a Cody Rhodes heart-fought win over Roman Reigns was a great story, but every great story deserves an epilogue and fans got to see something they haven't seen in a long time when a face wins the WWE's top prize, a fully-fledged victory celebration. Several of the WWE's top babyfaces joined Cody in the ring to honor his achievement, a nice touch because it showed the friendship between the characters. The WWE also turned Cody's win into something with a real sports feel as Cody was also joined by family members and he invited two people he credited with his successful return to the WWE to join him, that being Bruce Pritchard and Triple H. This was a fitting end to an endgame WrestleMania. But well, that was good, what about the bad is number one, another generic entrance theme. AJ Styles' new entrance theme reminded us just how weak the WWE's entrance themes have become with Def Rebel. The WWE should have taken the if it ain't broke don't fix it approach because AJ's new music is really bad. It's not bad as Lil Wayne's performance last night but it's bad nonetheless and another reminder why fans are clamoring for the WWE to revamp how it produces music. But instead of the downright ugly, 
we got the absolutely awesome. Tonight's main event was nothing short of awesome and went far beyond good. While some may claim the finish was overbooked, and it really was, and while cynics can say they knew Cody would win due to how much the odds were against him, the match was so well played that even if you knew the finish, the WWE kept you on a high speed chase with endless twists and turns. Surprise appearances from John Cena, The Undertaker and The Rock added to the excitement making this an unforgettable match, an unforgettable WrestleMania. But there you have it folks, our recap and review of Night 2 of WrestleMania. Be sure to look out for other videos that are coming today, and I'll see you next time with some more wrestling content.